And now we can get started. People deluded, I'm back again. Appreciative to you lot on Twitter, Twitch and YouTube. Make sure you're smashing the like button, people. Get the creative juices flowing. I'll know all your thoughts in relation to Arsenal against Bayern Munich. Tonight we go to war. We're in Armageddon. You know, we asked to be back in the big time and sit at the table amongst the big boys. And we've got Bayern Munich. If we're lucky enough to get past Bayern Munich across these two legs, then it's either Real Madrid or City and potentially a final at Wembley where Arteta's got a great record. Me personally, Personally, I don't advocate sleeping on Bayern Munich because one thing is, is domestics. Another thing is obviously European competition. And generally, teams that kind of struggle, in my opinion, in their domestic league, they tend to overperform or create, you know, achieve good things in the Champions League. And it's still Bayern Munich. You've got, you know... The vast majority of those players have won significant trophies, you know, won the Champions League in certain players' cases, you know, achieved great things, dealt with, dealt with pressure. Their manager, Thomas Tuchel, has been to two finals, winning one. You underestimate people in this life at your own detriment. Of course, I hope it's the Bayern Munich side that has been playing in the Bundesliga. And to be honest with you, I know the sample size is going to be a bit different because there's more games domestically than in the Champs. But they've been terrible defensively in the Bundesliga, which we'll get on to. And obviously, in the Champions League, they've actually been all right. You know, they've got quality players. And away from the quality of their, those players, there's like interlapping links. You know, you've got Kai Havertz playing against a German side and obviously his teammates. In fact, Declan Rice and Kai Havertz, one more yellow card, they're missing out of the Munich game. You see why you need a squad and depth, people. But Kai Havertz playing a German team, playing against his former manager, Thomas Tuchel, one of the only managers that have really retained faith in him. Obviously, Harry Kane's played for both Arsenal at youth level and known for Spurs. gnabry has been here. Sane and Arteta, obviously, the City links. And there's probably, you know, Musiala is technically a former Chelsea boy, even though he's more known for what he's achieved and achieving at Bayern Munich and for Germany. So there's a lot riding on this game, people. Obviously, we need to take advantage of our home form. For me in an ideal world, pardon me, I'd love a clean sheet, two goals going over there because I am a bit nervous going to Germany, regardless of what our form is saying. I can't lie, feels like I have imposter syndrome. So used to Arsenal being a banter club, this feels surreal. Naturally, that's going to be there. And with our players, I'm not going to lie, I think in the league, across what obviously we played this year so far and last year, I think... You know, being title contenders or dealing with high pressure moments, I've seen my team kind of eradicate that. In the Champions League, though, there has been times where it's looked like not that we're not sure of ourselves or not that we don't belong there, but you get to see that the players haven't been in this scenario. I think so far, Mikel Arteta has navigated the knockout stages of Europe of, of the Champions League uh, great. Obviously, in the Europa League, that was one of my question marks with Mikel Arteta because I don't think he's done that. I did think against Porto, as great as Saliba's been, and I'm not just highlighting him, you know, across the two legs, but more so the home leg. He looked like someone that's, you know, a, a, a centre-back in their own in their early 20s, even though Porto didn't really offer much. I expect there to be nerves. I expect excitement and nerves and all of these things in and amongst our players. It should be there. They wouldn't be human if they never had that. It's about how they channel it. Now, obviously, on paper, when you hear Arsenal and Bayern Munich, you'd expect Bayern Munich to wipe the floor with us. We obviously know, you know, typically nine times out of ten in the past, this hasn't been a kind fixture. You know, but on paper, we should be winning. Now, we know football isn't one on paper. You have to go out there and do the job. But things are happening in a great sense for Arsenal. And it's almost a contrast to Bayern Munich in that if you are to pit Bayern Munich to win in the Bundesliga, at least you go down to the last game of the season. Leverkusen have mopped the floor with them. Shout to Javi Alonso and Granit Xhaka. I'm going 2-0. Two 2-2, -nil. Two -two, sorry. Oh, I, I think the one weak spot with Bayern Munich is the shape and their defensive their defense. So I think you could get at them. Obviously, they've got Harry Kane. It's probably inevitable that he gets a penalty and things like that. But I've got confidence in Saliba and Gabriel standing up to be counted. They've dealt with a lot of tough opponents in the Premier League, obviously Haaland and whatnot. 
Big up DG. I'm going for a hard fought 2 0. I would love that, man. We get 2 0. We go to Germany. We kind of, bit different, but we stink out the place like against, like we did against City. We maneuver into the next round, really and truly. I mean, this is what the players should relish. Obviously, not all of the players have been here, but for Mikel Arteta, for I know he's not playing, but Ramsdale, for Benjamin White, for Odegaard, even, you know. The project right now is, is easy and it's and it's popular to say Arsenal have a good project and good things are happening. But when these players came into the club, it wasn't necessarily that, you know. So they've kind of been on that trajectory. Remember how far these guys have come. These are these are good problems, you know. Arsenal fans, if I say who is the player of the year, people and, and, and comment if you if you have one, you're all gonna say different names. We're talking about league titles, we're unhappy about. Not only, the, you know, we're actually unhappy about not beating Manchester City. We've got a great top six record. I would say beyond the obvious, and you can't underestimate what Declan Rice, David Raya have brought to the table and Kai Havertz. I would say the thing that I like the most about Arsenal, and I'm I'm lying a bit because obviously it's not, but there's a lot to like, you know, the, the, the variety in tactics with the manager, the players um, receptive to obviously that, the added physicality, the increased game management, better street smartness. We look a lot more calculated defensively. We box a lot more smart in games as well in that, you know, and I've, I've actually done a video. It's going to come out tomorrow. It's more of, of like talking about if we can win the league. Um, I think we box smart. Like if you try and start that you know if we have them crazy games from minute zero to 90 it's just end to end great entertainment we can do that with you we can box smart in that you know as the game goes on we will lure you into a false sense of security you'll think you're having chances and things like that and then obviously we'll do what we can there's a variety of things to like about what Arteta and the players are doing but for me it's resilience now there hasn't been too many times we've trailed in games and had to come from behind and things like that but I think we have some shown a lot of resilience. We showed resilience when the year started, 2024 started, after a terrible end to the year. I think there's been games, like I know I'm reaching a bit, but Brentford, you know, Ramsdale's mistake would have been the narrative pushed in previous years. We got over the line. Luton made it difficult. We did that. We suffered against City at the Emirates and we got three points. Obviously, we showed what we could do at the Etihad, beat Liverpool. We've been doing great stuff in it. But for me, it would be the resilience, like the, the added resilience. DG, how many hate-alongs do you expect today been saying we are the him club? You know every content creator that doesn't support Arsenal, to be fair, the game's the game. You've got to get the engagements and whatnot, people. Um, but, yeah, there's going to be a lot, man. Big up, DG. Love how you still pronounce Havarts wrong till now. Oh, come on. Havarts? Really? You see, once we get the pronunciation, all them things on on on. On, on lock, we're well, going Sky Sports and that. We always score first. And that's another thing. But for me, it's the resilience, man. It looks like it's just resilience, man. Resilience in all sorts of moments because you need that. You know, as much as to win champs and win prems, it's about how good are you at your best. It's also about how good you are at your worst. God forbid. But if we go two goals down, you know, in the first 10 minutes against Bayern Munich, I'm not saying we're going to come from behind and do a madness and all of this, but I've got a lot more confidence that we'll get it done. As Beyond the obvious nerves and, and, and question marks and all of that sort of stuff, people, actually, the only thing that scares me in this game, and I don't want to talk it into existence, is Kai Havertz and Declan Rice being a yellow card away from missing the second leg, purely because we know we need a squad and all of that jazz. But it's games like this. I'm not going to lie. I look at the Jorginho's, the Kai Havertz's, the Declan Rice's, these kind of players that have either transferable experience in Europe or they might be on the, the, the youngest kind of side, but they've got a wealth of experience that they can help their peers. As I said, they should relish it. You know, when we sat there in January off the back of a terrible end to the year, we knew what was to play for. And it's what, there's seven games left in the Prem, technically two, two against uh, Bayern Munich. So there's nine games left in all comps to have a season to remember. And, the last two years have been magical for Arsenal. We've been doing what we're doing. But unfortunately, in 20 years from now, I still probably won't have a beard or facial hair, baby face killer and that. But on a serious note, there's nothing etched in history. Like, it, the, these years might be seen as the building blocks if Arteta goes on to win something else. But for the 2023-24 season, there's nothing to remember it by. So it would be lovely to claim trophies, to claim top honours. Hey, get on to them. He said, 92 watching. We need to get at least 40 likes. Now we need 100. This is what we wanted for years, back at the top of the table and as feared as I am Mike Tyson. Are we necessarily feared though? What's up with the rumours about Rashford to Arsenal? I haven't, I haven't seen, I haven't seen that, but you know, you're helping the content. So let's, before we get into all the news and all the other stuff, let's see exactly what's, what's that saying on Google. And big up the different not because we was talking uh, we was talking about that uh, uh, yesterday actually. 
Uh, Rashford to Arsenal. I'm not for it. I'm not against it. Why I would be for it is because, you know, Mikel Arteta is not a miracle worker, but he's shown that players that need a bit of love or, or you know, a bit rough around the edges, he can help them. I don't believe in Rashford's ability to play up front because his hold-up play isn't the best, um, but he can technically play, play there. Obviously, he can play off the left-hand side. He is English. He is Premier League proven. Now, why I'm not for it is because <clears throat> I think we've got too many projects. But I sound like a hypocrite because the whole thing is a project. You know, the, the players in Arteta are not in their final form. And <clears throat> what's going on here? One sec, people. Croaky, man. Golden voice and that, you know. Sorry, people. But um, as I was saying, like, the project isn't, you know, everybody, in essence, everything at Arsenal is a project. The players are a project. The managers are a project. So, and I do want more project players. You know, I would like someone like Benjamin Sesko, for example, who isn't the finished article. But I think Rashford is a project. And I must admit, for someone that's in their mid to bordering on prime ages, late 20s now, the footballing IQ isn't strong enough. The inconsistency isn't there. And you lot have seen me speak about And I love Rashford as a player. I like him. I like what he does off the field as well. But he's one of them players, even if they score 20 goals, which he's shown he can get significant returns. I still, it's not that I can knock it because it's great, but I just don't really rate it really and truly. Like he's too hot and cold. He's going to be on big money. I don't think we're going to see too much benefits or too much return on investment but that being said boy, if you can get a tune out of Kai Havertz you must can get one out of Rashford and Benjamin White doesn't have many bad games for Arsenal or against United but one person that seems to at times have his number is Marcus Rashford so it could be that I mean what have you said here Rashford lacks work rate Arteta will not like that his work rate has been questioned but he'd have to buy in. he'd have to buy into it really and truly if I'm honest with you there's a couple players already in our team that were accused of such Lacking stuff. Player of the season for me is either Gabriel or Declan Rice. Notable mentions to White and Saliba. No Saka. If I had to whittle it down, I don't think I can pick one. I think there's obviously a natural bias to the attackers. I think, you know, I think Saka is dying by the high standards he set. I think people fail to, not you, but people fail to understand. The man's actually doing great stuff. I'm not saying there shouldn't be question marks, but it's almost not amazing because Saka, we, Saka does this really and truly. So, Saka's got a claim for me. I think Odegaard, not, he wouldn't win it for me, but he's got a claim. I think Benjamin White's got a claim. I think Gabriel's got... I think Gabriel should win it, regardless of what happens. And I think Benjamin White's there as well. And obviously, you can't look beyond Declan Rice. Nothing to do with Declan Rice, but, you know, he's coped with the pressure of joining for this, joining this club. He's getting better and better. It's, it's like he's always been here, respectfully, to West Ham. It's like he's come for our academy and always been here. But I think one thing that helps, obviously, Declan Rice is you were signed for £105 million. If he continues this form and he wouldn't win it for me, but on the basis of having low expectations and he's he's doing his thing right now, you could make a case for Kai Havertz. So, yeah, man. I know we are playing against him tonight, but I'm looking forward to seeing Miss Yala. Unpopular opinion. He's a better footballer than Jude Bellingham. I don't think that should be too unpopular. I think that's, you know, a good debate. I don't know where I stand. I think I think people sleep on Jude Bellingham's technical level. Um, but I think Miss Yala is... Mm, because Jude Bellingham's got that knack of just decisive moments. But I would say across 90 minutes, Musiala more excites me, if I'm honest. He's great in the tight spaces. He's great in the pockets. He's a, he's, he's a true footballer, really and truly. I've heard we're linked with Liao as well. Uh, we'll get on to Rafa Liang. Uh, a bit of rating for me. Good player. Good player. Uh, a lot of positive propaganda. If he could be converted into a striker, that would be great. Where did you see that? Because I'm actually, I saw that on social media, but I can't find it. I'm trying to get everything ready for you lot so that we can crack on. Uh, Rafa, you know, we are to Arsenal. There's probably going to be some old articles there. Is this journalist certain though, man? Like, it's, it's, I don't know. Are these lot talking, are these lot talking the truth? Because it's silly. We're getting to silly season where the season's finished. To be fair, I don't think Arsenal wouldn't inquire about him if I'm completely honest with you, but bringing him to the carpet is a completely different ball game. I'm trying to find it, but there you go. We'll see what that is saying. Let's put that there. Smash the like button, people, and don't forget we are doing a watch along for Bayern Munich, Arsenal, Arsenal, Bayern. So yeah, it should be pinned to the to the YouTube um, chat, but yeah. Saka has done well, but defenders and Rice have been more consistent. That's only my opinion. Graham, you're not you're not wrong. But look at the conversations we're having, you know. Once upon a time, even since Arteta is changing things, if we said who's player of the season, it's Pakayo Saka, the conversation's done. And then there's more people. But what, Saka's got 30 goal involvements. I do feel, though, there is a natural... Naturally, in football, there's going to be more of a bias to 
the attackers. So for Arsenal, the Sackers and Jesus and Havertz and all of these, they they score the goals and they look good in the highlights. Not saying that that's it, but they say titles are win, are, are won via defence. And I think the whole team's improved defensively. You know how we press, the positions we take up, just general street smartness. But I I think Gabriel deserves it. I, even in comparison to Saliba, take nothing away from William Saliba, but. I don't feel Gabriel gets enough credit. And I think Benjamin White deserves a shout. For me, if it was done today, it's between Benjamin White and Gabriel for me. But these are great conversations. Gabriel slash Saliba, DJ over Bellingham at Arsenal all day. You agree, DG? <laughs> are you saying over me? I don't want to leave the club of sport. Ben White has went under the radar for player of the season. Not for me. Liao used to play striker, but I feel he wouldn't be good for Arsenal because of the defensive work rate. You'd have to adapt to it. And I do think in general, not saying he would or wouldn't, but somebody said that with Rashford and now with Liao, yeah? You can add new things to your game. Obviously, just because they haven't shown it or haven't at this moment in time showed a willingness to do it. And obviously, it's a, it is a concern. If you come to a new club and the manager says, this is what you need to do, you can buy into these sort of things, if I'm completely honest. So, yeah, man. I mean, if Odegaard can do it, and in terms of stature and whatnot, Liao's got to want to do it. It's just a case of the work rate. You look through this Arsenal team, I know we've got some physical specimens and whatnot, but there's all different kind of players and they're all willing to put a shift in. Even someone like Smith Rowe, I know it's only Luton. You wouldn't have Smith Rowe down as being a tenacious tackler or trying to win the ball back, but you saw that. So it's about how much you buy into what's going on, really. Gabriel Saliba, Odegaard are our best players. Best players in general this season. Best play Who would I say is Arsenal's best player? Forget player this season, just best player. That's a good question. Best player. Martin Odegaard. Martin Odegaard for me. Martin up between Martin Odegaard, Declan Rice, Saliba, Bakayo. If Liao came to the Emirates, Mikel will coach the defensive part of his game. He'd have to. He'd have to, really and truly. He'd have to. And to be honest with you, I'm only seeing these these uh, Liao hypes again after he's he's what scored a couple of goals in recent games. We need Rashford, man, future England star. Ain't the future now? Like this is the and that's why I know Rashford's IQ hasn't improved significantly because he's 26, he's 27 this year. You know, three years or 30. And for me, he still plays. Like a teenager, he plays a lot on instinct. You know, there is a lot of strengths about Rashford. You know, Rashford on the transition could be a problem. Rashford in open space is a problem. I do think his technical level is great, but he's just inconsistent over what he does across 90 minutes. Who is the best finisher at the club, in your opinion, DJ? I've said it before. I'll give it to Trossard, if I'm honest. Gabriel's our best player. But look at the conversations. Look at the conversations. And big up Martin Odegaard as well. Fair enough. Guys and girls, do 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 DG a solid and smash the likes. We have over 200 of our fellow Gooners here. Let's support this channel. Appreciate that. Best rice slash other guy, the best super sub, trust art. Shout out to the subs because they've all, you know, I look back to the City game part. They came on and did all right with Tommy Yasu and Kai Havertz. Um, they had, you know, the subs have been doing their job. But realistically, for all the good substitution appearances, like, trust art's been all the way up here, innit? I'd like Ethan to be involved next year. I think he will, but we have to slow cook these players, man. If Zinni starts tonight, we are in for a long night. You can never rule out what Mikel Arteta might be thinking, but to me as an ignorant fan, obviously Timber is back training. Apparently, have a fully fit squad, but Arteta has previously said, you know, he's got to play for the 21, so I'd rule him out. Obviously, to my limited knowledge as being an Arsenal fan, I think I speak for a couple of you, look where I say it's between Kirio and Tommy Asu. Where you lean on that, I don't know, because I think Kirio... Pardon me, has found his feet. He's done well. He deserves his place on merit. You know, he's actually coped quite well in the big games. You know, I know Bernardo Silva gave him a bit of problems um, against City, but who isn't going to get who isn't going to be presented issues with Bernardo Silva? And he came out well. Um, Tommy Yasu, the only thing I would say is, you know, while you've been getting minutes in the legs, how long are you going to last out there, and how much rustiness is still there? But I would say it's between them. If you put a gun to my head, then I can only go with the team I feel a bit more comfortable with. And my bias would be Tommy, Tommy Asu at left back, if I'm honest. In fact, that could kick off this, this part of the segment. Keep your thoughts and whatnot coming, people. Now, again, I think if there's one area we can get at Bayern Munich, it's, it's, it's the centre-halves, man. It really is the, really the centre-halves because they're going to push up. Sometimes Kimmich is going to invert. 
Their centre halves are quite wide. Davies is going to be gone. Their spaces, their spaces, people. Um, and obviously they've got Goretzka who can make late runs. You know, Musiala's great in the pockets. You know, Muller can. A couple of these players can play other other roles. But I just went off the team that they played in the last Bundesliga game. They've got one v one demons. Kane will drop in. Kane's the, the perfect modern day striker, really and really and truly. He's a pre proven goal scorer. Can work the channels. Obviously can score goals. They're a great team. You know, be interesting to see. Uh, Bakayo Saka against Alfonso Davies as well, who I think is a great left back, and this might even be his last his last season there because he's been linked with by uh, with Real Madrid. But I need you to get onto him today, Saka. If I'm honest, big Saka is a big game player. The 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 report suggests such, but two legs. Well, I can't remember the, the Portugal one to be fair with you, but didn't really do nothing against City in the league. Didn't really do nothing against Porto. I'm not just putting it on the feet of Bukayo Saka, but I need my winger to present issues, man. Bayern Munich have a lot of problems or, or players that can call us, cause us problems, but yeah. And obviously they ain't got Manuel Neuer and a lot of their players are in terrible form, really. So can we ask questions of this? If he chooses any to start, then we have to back our tether that he made his decision. I mean, I'll back whatever the manager does, but, you know, in the same way I always say, if it works, you get praised. If it goes wrong, there's issues. And I do remember, what well, there was a few years ago, I'm sure Zinchenko actually played great at the Bernabeu. So, yeah. Tommy or Kirill? Tommy Asu for me, but Kirill's got all my confidence. So would Zinchenko if he played, but Zinchenko would make me nervous because you're not strong 1v1. And if you're playing against Sane, he knows you. You lot used to play against each other. It's, it's, it, and it's that. And I think one thing that goes against Zinchenko with what I see our team heading into personally, folks, I can't describe Zinchenko as not being an athlete. He's a professional footballer. And he's, you know, whether you're playing fullback or a central midfield, you have to be very fit. But when you look at the physical specimens we've got, you've got Timber, you've got Kirio, you've got Gabriel and Saliba, you've got Benjamin White, you've got Declan Rice, people that are strong in defensively and just strong in terms of physicality. I think that goes against Zinchenko, coupled on to the fact of he just that naturally doesn't think like a defender. I'm not going to lie, though, for me personally... I think since Sinchenko's returned and what he played against Luton and who else did we play? I can't even remember off the top of my head, but the last couple of games he's got minutes. I'm not saying he hasn't had questionable moments in the game, but I think the rhetoric from Arsenal fans, I don't think it's fair to him. I don't think he's been playing terrible. And it does feel like, you know, it, it felt a bit like sometimes with Granite Xhaka, where you can have your question marks about a footballer, but like I think you're projecting based on you know based on that, and you're not necessarily being fair to what he's done or hasn't done across ninety minutes, man. DG, if Arteta did the double, would it be a better achievement as a manager than Guardiola's treble? I'm shameless. I'm gonna say it is because you know Arteta. I would have to say you know what Arteta has been a manager for two minutes, and I'll be shameless, but treble now, nah, man. I, I will give it to the treble. I'd, I'd say the I'd say the treble, man. Like it's, it's, you won three trophies. And you dunked on Manchester United's head on the process of doing that at Wembley. It has to, it's treble, isn't it? Really and truly. Kane has scored more goals against Arsenal than any other player 14 times. Boy, and he is their top goal scorer in the German league. I mean, it's Harry Kane. We know what he's about. Try and mitigate against that. Their midfield is their weakest point and they know it. Failed transfer attempts of Rice, Paulinho and a couple of others, essentially. I believe Tuchel will set up to frustrate Arsenal in the first leg then take their chances at the Allianz. And I've said it before, yeah. You see the Champions League. For me, it's a, as much as it's about tactics, I feel what's not spoken about is the psychological meanings to it. You know, one thing that's that these players collectively have that we don't is that these Bayern players have become accustomed to do it. They're significantly more experienced. I think, and as I said earlier, in the Porto game, it looked like it was a bit nervy at times from us. I think that's that. And I think that's there's moments, really. You know, Saka can produce moments. Trossa, all of these guys can. But then you look at Sane, you look at Mula, you look at Musiala. These lot can can make moments. Look at Real Madrid. When they won the last Champions League, you know, there was about three times they could have went out. They made the difference. So I do think you need to have moments, man. It's an editor, my boy. Arsenal would have done it fairly with, with way less resources. I'm here for it, but I mean... Without getting into the isms and schisms and, and whatnot, yeah, man, they would have. FA Cup is kind of worthless, though. Definitely not. You can't be an Arsenal fan. FA Cup is not worthless at all. Is it the Champions League or the Prem? No, but it's the oldest cup competition. It is a big trophy, and it's one I want to win every year. You can never negate that. And to be honest with you, you know, it. I don't think it bought it a time because the club would have stayed with him already, but it might have bought some time, really and truly. And at the end of the day, it's a trophy. 
League Cup, though, you, you, you might be right. I think all the media Zinni has done has added to the reason. Yeah, it probably is that. It just doesn't necessarily feel fair, man. I can only call it as I see it. Like, for me, I wouldn't even... I mean, some of the rumours you see with Zinchenko, 45 million with two years left on his deal, I'm not going to say I wouldn't be thinking, oh, you know what, let's get it done. But I think there's a role, a significantly reduced role, according to the game state, kind of how he was utilised at City. That's what we've got to do now. You know, one love for coming here and showing us what the inverted fullback role was. To be fair to Zinchenko, he has had this year and last year some great defensive performances, also some terrible ones. And he was part of a back five that conceded, you know, hardly any goals, helped Ramsdale get the clean sheet and all of that jazz, people. So, yeah, for me, my lineup, well, that's Bayern's. Well, I mean, it's it's pretty simple who goes out there in it for me, and I'd love to see, hear you lots of opinions. I'm going Rio. I mean, there's three, there's three, four names really and truly that every Arsenal fan is going to have. Obviously, we've got Mr. Benjamin White deserves to play rightly so. Oh gosh, no, <laughs> got to have the same kit as the keeper. So yeah, I'm going White. Let's forget the numbers for a bit because slightly I can't remember everyone's. Obviously, Saliba and you're gonna Saliba and Gabriel. Just keep doing what you've been doing against the top defenders slash uh, top uh, top attackers slash well known problematic strikers in the Premier League. You know, again, I'm not even talking about necessarily the Harlands and that. You talk, like one thing I like about them, there's been poachers, there's been target men, there's been false nines, and they relished it really and truly. You know, as an Arsenal fan during the Emirates era, you could I don't know these players, but sometimes you could look at our centre backs whether they were playing Costa Jogba. All of these kind of guys, you know, San, I know it's not the same, but like Sane, Aguero, uh, Sergio Aguero, Son Hyun Min, any decent attacker you can think of, Kevin De Bruyne, all across the pitch. And it looked like people are scared. For me, these players now, they relish it, which I'm going to need that today. Gabriel, I've been singing your praises, so you need to play. Left back is where it gets a bit technical. I understand everyone that would play Kirill. And I, I have, he has all my faith if he goes out there. But for me, going into this game, Tomiyasu, your strongest 1v1 player. And I just feel like the, the Japanese Swiss Army knife, you know, it probably is going to be Sane. Probably stay on him like a rash. Won't leave him alone, really and truly. Um, so, yeah, that would be it for me. Again, some of these guys picked themselves in Declan Rice. We need that immediately. Declan Rice is in for me. Midfield is where it gets techie, not where it comes to Martin Wondergaard. I'll never forgive something. I'm joking, but I never forgive some of you lot for screaming get Bendia and Madison's better than him. I'm I've been wrong about a lot, but listen, the class region is sick, man, and we need him today. But he's another one, I'm not gonna lie. I just said about moments. I'm looking at my players that can produce moments. Kai Havertz is literally at his moment winning this competition. Martin Odegaard. I know people don't want to hear it, but Gabriel Jesus, Gabriel Martinelli, Bakayo Saka, this is your time to make history in your own ways. So I'm going with, yeah, Odegaard's there. Again, you know Bakayo Saka has to turn up. And I'm a bit wary about Bakayo Saka because, obviously, if you cast your mind back to the international break, like heading into it, people, right? I was excited because he's pulled out of the England squad. I was like, raw, Arteta's doing what Ferguson and Pep was doing. Players are saying they're ill or they're injured. Cool. And we heard Saka was having treatment. And we know a, a number of these players have been playing with Knox. Saka, one of them. Arteta has said it several times this season. In fact, at this point in the season, for most clubs, I, I, I think if you did a survey, there's not a single player that hasn't got some sort of knock on niggle and things. Obviously, since that international break, you know, Saka was fit for the looting game, but we 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 took it as a precaution not, not to involve him. And I think he was poor, not, not poor against City, but he didn't excel in an attacking sense. I do think that played a part. Um, to it to it to a degree, and obviously he got the night off against Luton. Did okay against Brighton. Still don't look like he's moving the way he, he like he could like fully pain free if that makes sense. So I'm wary about what Bukayo Saka we're gonna see today. Hopefully it's the one we know. And again, it's about the team performance. You know, if everybody drops a six out of ten, but we win two 0 I don't give a flying f people because you're getting the job done. Uh, so yeah, Bukayo Saka. In midfield, the third midfielder to complete where we've got Rice and Odegaard for me. Do you go Jorginho? Do you go Partey? I think it is a Jorginho game, but then I think it's a game for Thomas Partey. They're both experienced. Jorginho's he has won this competition. I always forget he's won it. He's won this. He's good when it comes to the chess matches. How fit is Thomas Partey? In many ways, I think Tuchel against Arteta will be a bit of a chess match. But then maybe it's a bit open because the players are excited. Our fans are going to be making bare noise. Where do you go? What do you go with, folks? I don't know, man. I really don't know. But I've been saying this for a few weeks. 
And it's no disrespect to Jorginho because, you know, Kirio, Jorginho, you lot are going to need to come on at some point. Um, I'm going with Rice, Partey and Odegaard for me. I, I think Kai Havertz deserves to play beyond the obvious. He deserves to play. And again, we're going to need him to drop into midfield, you know, make them tactical fouls. Be, be careful with it and pick your moments because you, you're on a yellow. But he's vital to games like this, in my opinion, if I'm completely honest. The left-hand side is probably the, truthfully, the hardest one for me because I think you have to you have to go Martinelli. But then Gabriel Jesus has saved his best for the Champions League. Again, an experienced individual will put in a shift defensively, not saying Martinelli won't. I don't know, people. I don't know. Do you go Martinelli or do you go Bukayo Saka? Part A ain't match fit, DG. I don't expect him to be 90-minute match fit, but you've been on the bench for a while. You've got your minutes. You have to be able to play some part. I don't think Tommy Asu is necessarily. Can Jesus play two games in a week? That's the thing. Like, he's another one nursing his way back. And that, as you know, if I'm going with Tommy Asu and Thomas Partey, that's too many guys. I feel that we don't know if they've got 90 minutes in them. So let me know your thoughts, people, man. I don't know. I do think Jorginho playing the full 90 against Brighton tells me Partey will start today. Jorginho can't play two games in a in a week. We're gonna, well, he's going to have to play some minutes today, ain't he? 105 likes. Let's keep going. Playing part A would be a risk when he hasn't played much games. I hear you, and you're not wrong, Kay. But playing devil's advocate, and of course, if something happens, we miss him for the majority of the season. But if there ever was a time to take a risk, is it not today? In life, you have to take risks. Mikel Arteta, Kai Havertz, was, it was an educated risk because he knew he did, but it was a risk. Can't forget Trossard. Can't forget Trossard. 100%. I'm even doing him a disservice. With Trossard, you wish you could play 12 players. Do you go with Trossard? I do feel... Trossard hasn't always excited me when he started games. I feel he's looked a lot better off the bench, but there's also been games he's come off the bench, not really done enough, nothing. And there's also been games he started and done well. Trossard, good player for us. But you're right, he's he has an, he, he, he could be in the mix. I'm going Martinelli, man. I need fearless guys, tenacious guys. Take nothing away from Trossard um, and Jesus, but... In Martinelli, we trust Jesus. You can everyone can always come off the bench, people. So for me, obviously Ramsdale was not going to play, but Ramsdale, Tommy Asu, Gabriel Saliba, White, Rice, Partey, Odegaard, Kai Havertz, Bakayo, Saka, and Martinelli. And where's my notes? I'm sure I did something in preparation for you lot. You lot are going to laugh at my handwriting, people. But hey, pick up the green screen. That saves me embarrassment. But what have I got here, people? Um, Obviously, this is a game etched in the memory of Arsenal fans, a game which has a painful memory. We wanted to be in the big leagues around the big boys. Here we are. Domestically, Munich have struggled. Thomas Tuchel is leaving. This is the only thing they've got to play for. We've spoken about Sane and the City links, Kane and the Kane and obviously Gnabry with the North London links, Kai Havertz against the Germans. As I said, the psychological factor will be massive in this game, people. Munich have been here before. We're new on the block in that regard. We have to make the home form count, in my opinion. Um, Looking at their Bundesliga stats, they've made 270 crosses in the Bundesliga, so that's something to worry about. Uh, Harry Kane's had 126 shots and scored 32 goals. Sane has 11 assists. So, I mean, no brownie points for that. We know they've got great attackers, and you'd expect to hear that really and truly. They, we know they've got a perfect blend on paper of players. They've got players that are great in the pockets, late runners, intelligent players, strong dribblers, all of that sort of stuff, people. Um, I don't know if, if this matters, really, but, you know, I think they've ran... In total, 3,110.4 3, kilometers, km, I can never say that. Is there a case to outrun them? Um, and in terms of aerial duels, where you look at Kim Min Jae, he's 172 in the Bundesliga. That's another reason why Kai Havertz, in my opinion, has to play. I'd love Declan Rice to play. I mean, not Declan Rice, <laughs> Eric Dyer to play because we can get onto him. Head up, DJ. How am I going to read it, man? Come on, help me. Martinelli, Trossard combo with Kai. I want to keep Trossard on the bench, man, because you're like obviously when everybody's fit, we've got a decent bench. But I just feel a lot confident. Like if you bring on as much as I like Smith Rowe, you lot know me. I'm I'm always singing his praises. But for me personally, you don't know what Smith Rowe's going to come off the bench. You don't know what Re uh, Reese Nelson's going to come off the bench. Except you don't know what Eddie you're going to see. There's been games Eddie's come off the bench, done well. Others where he's looked like he's played 90 minutes before he's you know come come to play in this game. Trossard and Jorginho. 
give me a lot of a lot of faith. And obviously, if Kirill's on the bench, can do a thing in that as well. But again, if Kirill plays and Jorginho plays, to be able to bring on Partey and Tommy Asu, it's a great thing. Trossard to start. Would rather push Jesus over Trossard, to be honest. I hear that. And this is look at look at the good problems we're having. Do you like if this was three years ago? Lord knows I don't even want to think about the team we had three years ago beyond a couple of names. But it, we would have been moved from this segment of the live stream. We need party for the run in, maybe second leg in Munich. It's true, but you need to deal with what's in front of you. I don't know if I should watch Madrid City or Arsenal versus Bayern. No offense. Do what you need to do, man. And it's a bit annoying because I'm definitely going to watch Arsenal. But why put them on the same day? Respectfully, you could have done PSG against uh, who's PSG? You got Barcelona. You could have ran that today. I wanted to watch City versus Madrid, man. But unfortunately, it's not going to be a that thing. If Rice and Havertz get another yellow, they miss the away leg. True, which is a problem in that regards. And I mean, if it happens, it happens, really. Like, it, I, I'm sure they're going to be told that. But how much could you really stop it? You know, again, I think there might be a conspiracy. Who is it? Declan Rice got one silly yellow card against someone. And we was all up in arms about it. Who was it? Was it Porto? Can't remember, but yeah, going to Germany to not have or potentially to not have one, if not both, of Kai Havertz and Rice, it's an issue. But at the same time, we're gonna have to get on with it. Like these are factors that happen. I would start Jesus, but one of Martinelli or Saka would have to be on the bench at the start. I'm not benching Saka if I'm honest with you. Porto five minutes early. Yeah, it was it was stupid. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we need to get onto your way for about that. Holding Pablo Marie Tierney Chambers. <laughs> But hey, do you know what? Shout out to Tini. He looked good against Sevilla. Pablo Marie apparently is being linked with some of the bigger Italian clubs. So he's doing all right. Getting smacked 3-1 minimum today. We are not good in Europe. Bayern have the quality and experience. Domestic form doesn't necessarily translate over to the Champions League. City took many years in investment. Some of that is great, you know, with what you're saying. And you are right, you know, we're, while we're making headwinds domestically and we look like we're becoming comfortable challenge for a title... Europe is a different ball game. Not only that, but for Arteta and the players, and I still think there's teething issues. All I can say is hopefully we don't get bopped. You know, the key thing is, obviously, we'd love to win three, four, five, whatever have you, healthy cushion going into the Bayern Munich game, but it's a war. And in war, you don't win, like, rarely when you go through history, it's a war one in a day. It goes on for a while. So we need to be strategic. We need to go in with a fighting chance. And we're going to have to navigate this very crucially. As we all know, we're in a tough, bit of the season now. We've done some of the hard work, you know, we're great against City, great with what we've been doing since the year's turn. We've got two games against Bayern Munich sandwiched in between Aston Villa, Zuno, Emre's, Emre's Aston Villa on Sunday, which we will be doing a watch along for. It's a techie one. And also you have to start to think about the, the fitness levels for all the players because the games are coming thick and fast. And even I'm jumping ahead, but even with the Aston Villa game, surely there might be one, two changes. And I just think back to when Mikel Arteta said, he said two things that stick with me this whole season. And you look at him, he say this one all the time. We've got one of the finished squads in the league. And that, especially in moments like this, this is where I now start to get a bit nervy. And he said, you need all your players back fit in April where we have, you know, everybody's technically training. The only one that's probably not immediately available for any selection in any capacity is Timber. Because, you know, it's, Arteta said he's going to have to play on the 21s and, and all of those things. Arsenal actually have more years in Europe than City, respectfully. We do, but I think he means in terms of the pedigree of doing serious things and getting to stuff. They've been to two finals, winning one. We've got to one. We did get cheated by UEFA. Hopefully, when the Rico case goes against Barcelona, we'll get what's rightfully ours, man. Them not having fans there should be big. We need to make sure we take advantage of it. 100%, any advantage we can get, we need to take advantage of it. You're right, but at the same time, Bayern Munich, the majority of them players are used to hostile environments. Get on with it, really, and truly. And I, I've never played the Champions League or the Prem, but anyone who's played Sunday League football, like you, way Boardwater Farm, you know, that will separate the mice from men. But you think about any hostile environment you've been in, yeah, you might be intimidated and it plays a part. But to a degree, you're, you're playing football, innit? It doesn't really matter. You're kind of there relevant. And the crowd, obviously, the crowd are going to cheer regardless. But if you give the reason, if you give the crowd reasons to be nervous, they're going to be nervous. When is the next Munich game? Next week or two weeks? Ain't it next week? I could be wrong, but what, let me actually go and look for you. Let me type that in. I'm sure it's next week, Wednesday. Mm. 
Next week, Wednesday, my friend. So what? Yeah, we've got Bayern Munich today, obviously. Sunday at 4.30, a day after my birthday, April the 14th. April the 13th, my birthday. I accept all sorts of gifts. Brownings, DM me. But um, yeah, we play today against Bayern Munich. Aston Villa on the 14th, we'll bet you on a Sunday. Then we play Bayern away on Wednesday the 17th. Wolves away as well. The games are coming thick and fast, people. Really thick and fast. Even the second leg against Bayern. You know, not to play devil's advocate, but... You know, the second leg against Bayern, we obviously are playing today. We're playing on Sunday. Obviously, from Sunday, it's a quick turnaround because we're going to have to fly to Germany, do our recovery sessions and go there. Let's just assume for this example that, I don't know, it's 1-1 from the first leg. It's gone nil-nil into the second leg. Uh, the, the second leg, 90 minutes, ends nil-nil. We've got extra time and penalties. That's more minutes in the legs. Then you have to come back and travel three days later to play up to the Midlands to play Wolves, where Gary O'Neill's a problematic manager in a good way. And then you're rewarded for playing on the 20th of April. Three days later, you've got Chelsea, which as crap as they've been in the bigger games, they've been presenting issues. Then you've got the North London derby. It's all to play for, man. For next season, I would like a stronger squad, though, if I'm completely honest with you. Thick and fast, mate. We're talking about football rums. Like, fam. <laughs> Pick up, bro. Slash the likes, DJ. We got some buzz life for you. Just run us a quick 40 mil. Who's that? I don't know who that is. I know who Declan Rice is. I know that McAllister. You, I don't know who Shabazzle is. He was. I know you was up late at night watching them silly YouTube comments. What? Because he scored screamers. Because he scored screamers. I scored a screamer. Like what? Man, I did. Man, come get your four points back, pussy. Anyways, big him up. But yeah, excited for this running. We dreamt of times like this. Could be a sweet dream or a beautiful nightmare. The European heritage is kind of air to me, man. AC Milan should be getting to the quarters minimum every single year if it was that significant. I do think it is significant, but at the same time, it's a history thing, really and truly. It don't mean it don't mean much. Like out of all the teams, obviously Bayern do that. The only team that I feel in the present day kind of holds weight is Real Madrid because you know, as a club, them lot are very heavily focused. Not that the others aren't, but heavily focused on that. So yeah, it is a bit air, man. Jacka scored screamers, man. We don't rate that, bro. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't think... Okay, that's cool talking about Shabazz. Like, what happened to Gravenbeck? You thought he was mess because he was Dutch. You thought he was getting saved off and then, man. <laughs> there's a re there's a reason Bayern flogged him. It's peak, man. It's peak. But yeah, looking at our statistics, people, there's reasons to be optimistic, though. Arsenal at home in the Champions League, we have the highest rated team. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to just say that because it sounds great, but what does that even mean? Uh, we've scored the joint most goals with 13, fewest goals conceded, zero. This is all at the Emirates, by the way. Fewest XG conceded, fewest XG per shot against. Now, that's obviously going to change today, but... Yeah, and that's off the base of, basis of our group stages, really and truly. Like, they really ask us nothing at home. Porto was shook. Fewest non-penalty XG conceded per game in Europe's top five leagues. Bayern are still there with 0 0.68 people. Moving away from that expected goal, expected goal per game in the Champions League this, this season. Pardon me. Arsenal have 0 0.78. Bayern Munich have 0 0.64. So, hey, it's all to play for. Our manager, Arteta, said, yes, we are in a good moment and winning and performing the way we are doing it always helps. It brings a really good spirit and just to be focused on the next match. Tuesday versus Bayern is a big task, but we're really looking forward to it. Hey, let's have it, man. Hey, you know what? We're winning today. We're winning today. We're winning. No, stay humble. Stay humble. Don't get excited. Don't get excited. But it's hard not to get excited, man. No, fuck them, man. Let's move to them today. Pardon my French people. Now, let's do this. Uh, Sane's been speaking. Uh, he actually, on our tether, he actually really helped me a lot. We also had a lot of individual talks about how I can improve my game. That's great. But our tether, you, you know his weaknesses. Make sure we do the thing today, people. Eric Dyer. Ugh, brother, what's that? Uh, I think last season, Arsenal played a lot nicer football than this season. But this year, they seem to be a lot more result-driven, a bit grittier and a bit less naive. You see why you should never give up in life? Because some people, you know, people, a lot of you, including myself, we've all got dreams, hopes, ambitions and aspirations. We've got all the talent in the world. Yeah. Do you know why you should keep going? Because there's someone that isn't as talented as you, doesn't have the ability as you but they're in a higher position than you for whatever reason. Blood, Eric Dyer plays for Bayern Munich. This is probably jobs for the boys. K needed an Englishman and, and whatnot, but how have you gone from Spurs to Bayern Munich? Fair enough, lad, fair enough. Arsenal will ban any supporter who sells their ticket to Bayern Munich fans ahead of tonight's Champions League game at the Emirates. Arteta's uh, striker or 
striker left winger he's on the bench at the moment uh jesus has said they are buying but we are arsenal if we arrive in the quarterfinals of the champions league it's because we deserve it and we have the quality we have to respect Bayern. they are buying but we are arsenal they respect us as well so it'd be a big game you see all you got that i turned in on gabriel jesus he's bagging today and when he gets back in form don't bread because i don't turn on my plays i don't forget what you did jesus August 2022 was something special. I've seen us turn on Saka, on Odegaard, on, on everyone apart from Declan Rice, really, and Saliba. But yeah, I don't think he's lying here. Uh, Jesus, and this is why we need guys like this. You lot say, I'm not being funny, I'm not saying they should say, we, we should keep them just because you lot disagree, but you lot that say we should sell Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus, I think you lot are chatting far, if I'm honest with you. If we was in a position like City, where they've got significantly experienced players, both in terms of age, and if not in terms of age, within the remit of what they've been doing, then great. But you can never underestimate the Jorginho's, the Zinchenko's, the Jesus's in and around the team, if I'm honest. Uh, everyone here played in big stadiums before, so everyone's prepared. It's a huge game and it will be a battle. But if we try to enjoy it and be happy on the pitch, that will help a lot. Jesus, I hear the being happy thing, but put the ball in the back of the net, please. I need something to work with. Do you know how shameless I'm going to be if you score in this, goal, in this game? The editor is definitely using Gabriel Jesus in every graphic I make in terms of content post buying. It's the best part of the season for everyone who is still in the Champions League and also fighting for the Premier League. But hey, to tell that to my United fans, they're just cheerleading everyone against us. It's exciting because there are the deciding games and small details count. Keywords, small details count. Everyone is fit again and I hope everyone can give us extra to help the team the most important thing now is the fitness of the group it's only timber out but he's coming back soon i hope so this is good because it gives us extra power we have a big squad with a lot of qualities we learned that you have to seize the small details like we're doing now defensively everyone is running back to help the team jesus has six goals sorry has four goals in six champions league appearances this season he said maybe in the premier league i have good stats as well but people don't want to see. I want to win games and trophies. At the end, everyone is happy. But I'm a striker. I want to score. I have to score. So I try. It doesn't matter which competition it is. I try to enjoy myself and help the team in the best ways. This is what you want to hear, really and truly. Zinni, I agree with. We have to use our strongest 11. No, Jesus and, and Zinni. To be fair, DG, no such thing as stupid questions. But yeah, I'm not selling Jesus or Zinni this summer. We need depth. Cannot wait to see... But yeah, 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 we don't want no one breaking their legs, man. My man, can you give five out of ten majority of the of his games that once in a while he can offer you a word a world class performance? I think you're talking about Gabriel Jesus. I think Gabriel Jesus plays well nine times out of ten. It's just what the, the thing that separates him, you know. If Gabriel, I mean, you know, if some butts are life in it, but if he could score twenty league goals or was a natural goal scorer. I genuinely don't think we're talking about signing a striker in the summer. If we are, it's someone that can provide backup. But he's just not a natural finisher. I, I don't think he's ever going to be. That doesn't mean he can't have great season scoring goals. But I just don't think it's going to happen. I accept him for what he is at the moment, this moment in time. Jesus makes no sense. Like This guy will dance past several players and score from the most acute angle. And then he'll be through 1v1 and, and just miss it. He makes the difficult look easy and the easy look difficult, really. Arteta's record against two calls so gives me more confidence. We're going to need all the confidence we can get, man. Don't need to show buying too much respect. We need to win tonight. Got to show them a healthy respect, but go for it and believe in ourselves. We need to bench Saka tonight, today. I hear that, I hear that, I hear that, I hear that, I hear that. Uh, Gabriel Jesus has also been speaking, people. It's good to go there and speak sometimes to the young players, but I'm a player and a person who, if they come to me, I'll tell them. If I see something that I can tell and help them, I will do, but I don't think here we are kids anymore. Everyone's played in the biggest stage in football, World Cup, Premier League, Champions League now, so I think everybody is ready to help Arsenal. I think we believe more as a team, as a group. Last season, we played amazing in the first part of the season until January. Then after, we struggled a little bit. This season has been the opposite. If we could do the first part of last season and the second part of this, it'd be an amazing season, but real life is different. Now, I think because we passed this, now we are more ready, more confident and more mature. He obviously bigged up Harry Kane and the numerous attackers and the general threat that Bayern Munich uh, could pose to us. So I'm not going to bore you lot with that. But you see, I try to make sure I'm prepared so you lot don't miss a, miss a beat, people. What's this? We've already gone over that. 
Harry Kane's back to do a madness. Tommy Tuchel's gassing him up. I'm sure Spurs fans will be twerking, you know, probably some Spurs fans in the stadium, people. Odegaard has said, I think we should respect him in terms of Harry Kane, but I don't think we should fear anyone. We should focus on ourselves and the quality we have in our team. That's all. Kane is a good player, of course, but I've played against him a few times. We know the quality he has in the box. He's also good in the link-up play. We're facing a good team on Tuesday. Fair enough. And again, Jesus has said, from now until the end of the season, every game is a final in both comps. So you have to imagine that at the moment we play nine finals. It's really tough. Tuchel has been, you know, speaking about Kai Havertz and he said he's pleased to see his success. I've read that already in Truth People, so I don't want to anymore. Let's close these because we've gone over that. Don't forget, it's watch along business. Now let's see what the transfer news is concerning people. Um, but before we do that, what are you lot saying? Bayern are looking like Spurs 2.0. They've got the Spurs virus. I hope so. Richard, shout the members. Just got here, bro. Hope you're good. Can't wait for tonight's game. I'm quietly confident we can get a result. I hope we can get a result. And it is mad. Jesus, Jesus just does not make sense. He's a lovely footballer. He's a fighter. He puts his body on the line. He's clearly receptive to what the manager wants. He's versatile. Link-up play is amazing. And some, but I did say, like, if you slightly deep it, beyond the obvious, it's no different from what we saw with Lacazette, man. Football has evolved. This big striker thing is just a fantasy. Arteta will never. I hear that, but I'm pretty sure Arteta is going to bring in a striker in a, or a winger in the summer, if I'm honest. Saliba and Gabby can keep Harlan in check. Kane is light work. Inshallah, my guy. Kane always crumbles in real big games. Chill, 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 man. Let's just let's just see what happens and then run the agendas. I did cover this on a video yesterday. Big up to you lot who watched it and smashed the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Apparently, Trossard could be getting a new contract at Arsenal. Arsenal are ready to offer Leandro Trossard a new contract at the Emirates Stadium. Barely a year since the Belgium international attacker arrived from Brighton, football transfers understands. As we all know, he joined in January of 2023 for 24 million euros. Thank you for saving us, you know, and our disappointment for initially not getting Mudrick. It's funny how things work out. The 29-year-old has scored 12 goals in all comps, people. Obviously, he scored against Liverpool in February, as it says there. Football transfers understands that Arsenal have scheduled a meeting with Trossard to discuss extending his contract by a year from 2026 to 2027 plus the option of an additional season so that helps us obviously protect his value obviously navigate if his form goes left you'd imagine within the next year or so there's going to be wingers are coming through and Trossard could be that experienced player I, I, I got a lot of time for Trossard man it's a shame that you just can't play 12 players. Sources have revealed that these talks have been planned since Trossard arrived at the club 15 months ago. He's always held a desire for his long-term future to be secured for the foreseeable future. Indeed, the deal taking the winger to the Gunners nearly broke down as the player was unhappy with Arsenal's contract offer in terms of its comparatively short duration. Apparently, he's valued at £23 million. I mean, it could have only dropped because of age essentially, if that's the case, and his values dropped. Apparently, Jokeres, his agent, was in Lisbon to watch the game against Benfica. What that means for Arsenal directly, I don't know, beyond us just looking at him. Apparently, Arsenal looked to have a free run at Jokeres after a fresh update on Chelsea's interest in the striker. Let's scroll down to the bulk of this, people. Apparently, this article, the people who make this article said in March, they broke the news that we're looking at him, people. United, Chelsea and PSG have all been keeping tabs. Apparently, Arsenal... Um, are boosted because United are apparently focused on Ivan Tony. PSG are intent on getting Osserman uh, to replace Mbappe and Chelsea are in the fight there. But the striker thing is going to be a merry-go-round. Everybody's going to be looking at the same people. Ben Jacobs has said, Victor Jokerez is not a player Chelsea bid for in January, despite reports in Portugal. And it's understood he's dropped out of consideration as it stands. Perhaps one reason why is because of Sporting's 100 million euros. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to pay that, if I'm honest, really. Uh, uh, we've actually been linked with uh, Wolves player people. Jao Gomez's impressive performances for Wolverhampton Wanderers have drawn the attention of a few clubs, including Man United and Arsenal, who United have been aggressively linked with him. The midfielder has been a regular ever since he arrived at the Molyneux from Flamengo in January 2023. Apparently, it was stated on, on the 25th of March that Man United were looking at him. Today, though, apparently the Gunners are. The North London club are presented as a more as more serious than Man United. Um, the article says Arsenal may make an offer to Wolves for the Brazil International when the window opens. The report makes no mention of the fee the Emirates club may offer. Fair enough. However, they do state Mikel Arteta's side will go further in discussions with Gary O'Neill's side for Gomez, again indicating Arsenal more serious than Man United. I mean, Stevie Wonder could see just based on how we are off the field and what we're doing on it that we're definitely more serious than Man Divided. Sorry, Man United. 
you know, big up 10 excuses. Uh, again, Ikram Kondo. Now, I'm not dissing him. I'm sure you're a good journalist and you're an ITK and all of that. And, you know, in the summer, we might have to be shameless, open your DMs and make some content and ask you questions about players I know, you know, Arsenal not signing. But he don't appear to be the guy that kind of knows all the stuff that is happening. But for what it's worth, apparently he has said Arsenal, Man United and PSG remain interested in AC Milan's Portuguese winger, Rafa Leal. I wonder if PSG will go for Victor Rossman and Liao and get the, the Liel boys back together. I mean, I'm having Liao. I would prefer a striker versus someone that's a left winger. Um, and I know we probably need both. I, I do think fans overrate him a bit. I think he's quality if there's space. I think he's got good abilities, but I think his passing over 90 minutes could be good. I think his work rate could be good. I think he could be quite wasteful at times. Phil, I think last season he actually scored a lot of goals. This season it's been a, there's been a little less consistency. And he's also been linked with signing a new deal at AC Milan. So I always kind of have that in the back of my mind. I mean, this journalist has also said Arsenal been in contact with the reps of Rafa Leal people. Apparently he's Arteta's top target this summer. I mean, some articles say it's Jokerez, some say it's Leal. I don't know. Leal is open to a move, no negotiations yet, but AC Milan have named their asking price. And I know players are always going to say it, but when you see him speak about his future, he says, I want to stay at AC Milan, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this article, apparently Romano says Arsenal are set to sign important striker. Specifically, what has he said? Maybe that one player is missing when Saka and Martinelli are up. No, who is this? I want to see what Romano's had to say, not whoever that is. Uh, Arsenal will sign an important striker this summer, and one of the names on their list is Victor Jokerez. They've been following the sport in Lisbon sh striker during this remarkable season, but they're not the only ones. Jokerez is appreciated by Arsenal, but they still have to decide what they're going to do. And remember that the Swedish striker has a 100 million release clause with Sporting insisting they want something very close to this fee, not something like 50 or 60 million euros, as reported by some media outlets. Let's see what happens with Arsenal, but they could have other options too, so it's not something that's going to to be decided now i mean we've got to have several options really just like most competent clubs if you want to do competent things people so yeah we can begin to close that uh again we haven't directly been linked with gerald braithwaite but i really like the everton man respectfully if everton go down i'm trying to pick him up really and truly apparently they're seeking 70 million on him and arsenal have been linked with him before but united madrid newcastle and city have all been name dropped in this article folks uh what else have we got would you not take raheem sterling i might do a, vi a video on this you know like players that are seen as damaged because chelsea are planning to bring in a marquee winger signing this summer and apparently there's question marks internally over Raheem Sterling's future at the club. You brought him back to London and thought he was going to ball out. He's just happy that he can go to his mum's house and get Sunday Sunday dinner again. He don't care. He does not care. But, you know, our Teta links, could it do something for us? We've been linked with Drewsbury Hall. In fact, yesterday there was talk of an Enketia Drewsbury Hall swap deal, people. That could be something uh, to, to, to monitor. So, yeah, we'll have to see what's going on there. What else have we got? Chelsea are to make an early move to sign Nico Williams, which is a player that a lot of you lot want. Congratulations to him, really, because him and his brother won the Copa del Rey. What a great moment it was for the two brothers and also the family. But the 21-year-old has been linked with Chelsea, and apparently Chelsea are looking to steal a march. He's got 50 million euros in brackets, 43 million re euros release clause. It's believed Chelsea have decided to pursue a move for the Spain international after watching his performances. Now, Chelsea can turn their situation positive in my opinion if they do the competent things but naturally if he looks at that you know there's got to be something Pochettino might not be there so the environment isn't always good so sometimes it's nature versus nurture which we're a lot more positive but him you know you get a lot of money it, Chelsea are a historical big club of recent since Roman came in London aspect but Sterling's struggling and Konku can't stay fit Mudrik is looking rubbish for Ukrainian Neymar none of their attackers are thriving do you really think you should walk into that I don't know, people. Things can change. But yeah, it looks like they could be ahead in the race to sign him. Uh, apparently, you know, I'm tired of the is that rumours because one minute there's a chance and there's not. Spurs have apparently been linked to him as well. Newcastle could be forced to accept offers for star people. Newcastle do not want to sell Isaac this summer, but may be forced to if they need to balance their books. I mean, we've been hearing about the FFP stuff. So this is just another creative way of saying the same thing, allegedly. Apparently, Peter Rook um, revealed that the Magpies want to keep Isaac beyond this season and will rebuff offers. However, following years of heavy spending under the PIF-led ownership at St. James's Park, the club may be forced to sanction sales for some of their biggest stars to abide by profit and sustainability rules. I think they will make decent money on some of the players they sell, but what's their best assets? 
It's just probably, respectfully, Bruno Gomares and Isaac, they're going to get you decent money. I would say if Kevin Botman was fit, he might be a close third. I don't know. One of these key players could be Isaac, who has garnered a swath, swathe of interest from Premier League clubs. He's been linked with Spurs. I mean, if they have to sell, why not? But for me, and of course I'm being biased, but logically, with the money Newcastle have and what you know of Spurs' owners and whatnot, who is more likely to have an ambitious project? I would be staying at Newcastle. If Arsenal want you, if historically Chelsea and Liverpool and Man United and these clubs want you, obviously United's project isn't the best. I could understand it. But it doesn't... I, I'm not going to buy into that, really. Apparently, old Nana of Everton is likely to leave as Everton's asking price has been revealed, people. What specifically is that? They also need to balance their books. You know, when you look at articles, Newcastle, Chelsea... Uh, Everton, everyone needs to, but Wolves, we've heard that, all need to balance books. So when Arsenal are linked with their players or anyone, it's not that it's not right or wrong or it couldn't happen. I'm always a bit pessimistic, but I don't know anything. What is the price tag? What is the price tag? Maybe we should read stuff. Let's try. Oh, they're looking for 50 to 60 million for another. I mean, 22 years of age, 50, 60 million, the new 10 million in today's day and age. Me and Arsenal trapped him for him when he was at Lille. I wouldn't be against it, but I would like to explore, you know, the Zuba Mendes, the Louises, people of that ilk before that. I think there is something you could give us. You could, you know, be another physical kind of midfielder, but I think there's better options out there. But I don't think he's a bad player, people. Apparently, ISIS are putting, you know, let's, let's just not get into that. I don't know why that's here, but yeah, we hope people stay safe and are able to just go and watch football games. I can't lie, this was crazy. Gabriel Jesus says he's unable to remember playing football without pain. That is mad. I don't remember the last time I played football without pain. I tried to keep strong in the mind. That's crazy. And he spoke on Arsenal potentially signing a striker. They already know they already know if they want one or not. This might be a question for them. My job is to train hard and improve what I have to improve. Speculation will always be there, which is true. And Gabriel Jesus apparently might even have surgery at the end of the season. We've heard that with Benjamin White and we've also heard that, well, we're going to hear it here. Apparently he said, in my best moments, one of my best moments in my career, I went to the World Cup and ended up getting injured. And today I still have these little problems with my knee. Today I have a different mindset. Today I think I have to look after myself a lot too, take care of myself because I, if I'm 100%, I will help. And if not, I won't help. So obviously, I always wanted to be available for the national team. And we want to be called up. We want to be there. Obviously, I want to play in another Copper America. I want to win. I want to conquer. I don't know. We'll see. I honestly don't know if my knee will be good enough to be available. What? What do you mean? We need... Yo, Jesus. Patting that up. And Arsenal as well. But still three months away, so we'll see what happens. Even here at Arsenal, there are things that you have to hold on to. Go, train, play, train today. Don't train, play. In short, it's difficult, but I intend to. My desire is always to be available for both Arsenal and the national team. It doesn't matter if at the end of the season I have to open up my knee and correct what's getting in the way and end up missing out on the chance to play in the Copper America. Yeah, we hope you can get over that. And it just shows you how much these footballers have to put their bodies on the line. That is scary and, and almost painful. We've got 178 likes, people. Who knew you lot would love a preview that much? Smash the like button. Trust me, if we hit 300 likes, I guarantee we win tonight. Tell him again. Jesus is a soldier regardless of the season. He's an amazing player who knows his role in the team. To be honest, not really. How many players are fully fit without pain or discomfort, which is true. Everton two points from a, a bottom and they got another points ban, well, points deduction, isn't it? Fufana is the answer. I like him a lot. He hasn't really been linked with us as much. You know, in January, he's heavily linked with us. But, yeah, I'm here for that. Sterling has been a complete disappointment at Chelsea. In another life, he should have been an Arsenal player, but he chose the other path. Sterling a little too late, but I wouldn't be against it. But I would rather Mudrick or Rashford if we're going to go down damaged goods. Blood will get a top striker. I'm telling you, big up this stream. Appreciate that. I've, I don't know for top striker, but I think we'll get a striker. And I don't know, are we going to get a target man, a bagsman, a poacher, a false nine? Are we going to get someone that's a, a bit more experienced? Are we going to go for a young, impressionable kind of, you know, the Zerskis, the Sesco's of this world? Technically, Ivan Ferguson, but we all know his thing is different because of Brighton. And Vape has not spoken yet, not yet spoken on his destination. The dream is free, the hustle is sold separately. Um, but I think we can forget about Mbappe. Liao, uh, not gonna lie, very overrated, has been quite poor this season. Not Liao, he's so overrated, scores one goal every five months. Buy back a Yoko, very raw, but it could work. And it will be a huge game for us, King Man. Hopefully, we can overcome today. Shout yourself, Adam. 
Chelsea can't afford Osman Kande. They need to sell 200 million worth of players to break even. They'll find a way around it, man. We should be more confident team from the start of the season, expecting a bounce in Emirates, a good start, and hopefully an early goal, 1-0 to the Arsenal. DJ, are you confident if we end up going to penalty second leg? I mean, it's the, it's the cruelest way in life to decide it. And I think where you look at, you know, us converting our pens in the Premier League this season, Mikel Arteta during pre-season, really in indirect ways, was putting an emphasis in August and July on we need to be good at penalties. Obviously, against Porto, we did the job. Raya's obviously given me a lot of confidence. I don't want it to go to that. I can't tell you I'm confident when it comes to penalties. It's, it's, it's the cruelest way to decide something. And it's just whatever happens on the day, man. I'll be confident in my boys, but I'll be extremely nervous, man. Extremely nervous. Extremely nervous. I think we need to maintain the stats again, Man City. Against, man. Again, Man City. But Ben Saka to be more dangerous. Huh? DG looking like Jesus. That's just sounding racist, but there's no way I look like Gabriel Jesus. She acted. People said that Arsenal had to sign a striker in Jan to compete, but then they went on to score 30 goals in like three weeks. Still think we need a striker, but it shows that goals are all over the squad. I do think when you look at some of the teams we put them goals in the back of the net against, it kind of tells you everything. But that just tells you maybe that the need for Arsenal to sign a striker is maybe overstated. But then there has been games, maybe City, definitely West Ham, definitely... Uh, Stay with me, Aston Villa, where maybe, just maybe, if there was an organic goal scorer, who knows? I would like another striker, but I still want us to share goals around. People coming off the bench, scoring set pieces. Obviously, the, the centre-backs and the more taller players are problems. Kai Havertz is finding his feet in that. Saka, Saka does his thing. Want to see Martinelli and Odegaard keep doing that. And then you bring in another striker that can get you 20 goals. It's decent, man. You don't want pens against the Germans. Drass, you're right. DJ, how's your day going? It's going good, man. I went gym. Uh, I edited a video to come out tomorrow. We're here now. When this is done, I'm going to get something to eat and have a, a short nap. And then we're back again at 7 p.m., I, I believe. So, yeah, just dealing with business. So I need to go through the emails as well. I hate emails. I hate emails. So, yeah, man, I have to do that. But I appreciate you. You hope you and everyone else have been having a blessed day. Strike on market and linked. We'd love to know what Arteta wants, but midfield needs to happen. I might be lying a bit. But if you offered me that left eight that, you know, the best left eight you could imagine that to take this team to the next level and a 20 goal a season striker, but you can only have one. I don't know where I stand because I want to say striker because they win games. But I genuinely think we're not going to get to where we can get to. We're moving along, but or better yet, we could accelerate this with midfield with a midfielder. I think we need the long term party and Jorginho replacements. We need the long term rice partner, really. I think we'll get one centre mid this summer and the next one next summer when probably, well, if Partey doesn't go, then probably when Partey and Jorginho go next year. I don't know. I hope Bayern Munich don't win, man. I can't predict anything other than an Arsenal victory. Positive thinking, man. We must take the game to Bayern because win, lose or, or draw, <laughs> Bayern will look to kill us in the second leg. You've got to live to fight another day. I don't have any updates on Jokerez, my dude. I wish he'd stop doing interviews. No, nah, man, that's harsh, man. That's harsh. But yeah, hopefully we win today, man. Douglas Louise is my option, set piece specialist, ish house, and he's got that dog in him bringing, man. I mean, you can't underestimate Bayern. I expect to see the best Bayern Munich, like the Bayern Munich you'd expect to, if I'm honest. And to be fair with you, they've got to like, put yourself in their shoes. It can't be nice. They've got to put some respect back on their name. And he is Douglas Louise's Premier League proven. Havart should be kept as our striker, then we'll, we'll continue to see him flourish. Yeah, you can play up front, but let's let's sign a striker in it, man. Appreciate that, James. I don't know who DJ is, but big up yourself, James. Both win, hopefully, champs slash Premier League. I think more chance. I think you mean to say Premier League. I think we've got more of a chance to win the Prem. Now that I've said that, we're probably gonna lose the Prem and win the champs, but I'd be happy with either one. Or can we win the Prem this year and champs next year? Or the treble next year? But hey. It could be special times, but as you know, Arteta is getting us getting us back for leaving and stuff. It does go out the window. It does. And as you know, Mikel Arteta and the players, of course, they're going to know the climate that Bayern Munich are currently in, but they're not going to sit there and go, yeah, let's sleep on them. They're not the Bayern they want. The complacency is a killer. Sleep is the cousin of death. If you sleep on anyone, they're going to hit you and it's, it's going to hurt. We just need to, you know, healthy respect, do what we need to do. And just leave the rest with God, man. But yeah, on that note, though, people, I'm going to have to see you a lot later. 
I've got to go and do some stuff. And yeah, it's been a great live stream. It's been a great chat. Again, if you're new here, make sure you're subscribing. Appreciative to you lot that have been listening, commenting, engaging, smashing like button, subscribing, and all of that great stuff. I'll be back at 7 p.m. UK time where we'll begin our watch along an hour before kickoff for the very game we've been waffling about. Paul, if it's a great show, it's because I've got great supporters like yourselves, people. So it's always a pleasure. You know, make sure you're subscribing, you're turning on your notification bells. There's always videos that hang around like a bad smell on YouTube. Twitch gang, don't feel left out and big up to you lot. And yeah, man, I'm going to love and leave you lot, people. Hopefully I can inspire people. In great moments, you need great players to do great things. Here's a great goal. <laughs> Alright, like, start me instead of Kiri, Kiri or Tommy Asi, man. I'll do this thing. Depending on what we put in, I'll do it again.